Coming soon to Ramping Up Your English, Amtrak's Cardinal Train takes viewers to Washington, D.C. We visit an Oregon congressman and get a tour of the U.S. Capitol. A congressional staff member takes us through all kinds of passageways and escalators on our way to the main part of the U.S. Capitol. We'll see the Capitol Dome, what's inside that dome that's so iconic of the U.S. Capitol, the legislative body of the United States government. Moving from the legislative branch, we take a quick glimpse of the judicial branch, the U.S. Supreme Court. See the Supreme Court building getting a facelift. We were in Washington during Congress's sequester, so there wasn't a lot of touring going on, including at the White House, where tours had been canceled. At least we got this exterior view of the greatest symbol of the executive branch of the United States. Here's the White House from the street. This is the north entrance of the White House, as seen from Lafayette Park, a Marine stands guard at the West Wing. While we were on our way to the White House, we encountered this spontaneous crowd waiting for, well, it became obvious as events unfolded. Here was President Obama's motorcade as he was returning from a trip to Miami, heading toward the White House. This trip to Washington will be featured soon on Ramping Up Your English. Back to Ramping Up Your English, a support program for intermediate level English learners. You can watch and download this program and others by visiting archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. Choose Ramping Up Your English from the sidebar or choose my name, John Letts. You can see this program on Channel 15 in Ashland and Channel 182 on Charter Cable. This is Episode 16, Segment 2. In Episode 14, we practice using a schedule, also called a timetable, to plan a rail trip, make a reservation, buy a ticket, and catch the train. Today, let's look at some words that sometimes give trouble to intermediate-level English learners. The words to consider are the words should and must. These words are similar, but they are also different enough that mistaking one for the other could leave you on a train plant platform watching the train leave the station without you. The word should is a word of advice and shouldn't be used as a warning, although it sometimes is. Should is also a word of judgment, which means it needs to be used carefully. In a practical sense, the word should tells someone about the best action that would take place in a certain situation. You might, for example, have made reservations ahead of time and someone says, you should do that. Well, the person giving this advice is not saying you can't get on the train without doing this. They probably see an advantage to booking early and they want you to have that advantage. Another example would be, you should use your smartphone app to get a ticket. Well, that doesn't mean that's the only way to get a ticket. It just means it's the way they prefer. Now, be warned that some people use the word should when they mean must. If you hear that you should bring proof of ID when checking in for the train, you could be disappointed when you find that you can't board the train without it. Must would have been a, the correct word to use there. This is when it helps to have a high enough English proficiency to ask clarifying questions. Now, some people are sensitive about being told they should do something. That communication could be interpreted as judgment of the way someone does something. If you want to explore the platform, for example, you might not appreciate your travel companion telling you that you should sit on the bench instead. 
If you want to tell someone they should do something, you can do it in a softer way by saying, for example, you might want to sit on the bench before all those people get here. Well, we'll be waiting at least a half an hour. Well, no judgment there, just friendly advice. You could also begin that thought with the words, I suggest. I have to admit, I don't like the word should, and I rarely use it. When I first taught fifth grade, I was told that my students should already know their multiplication facts. That was not helpful because most of them did not know them. So when I was told you should not spend time teaching them the facts, well, that was ridiculous. It didn't matter if they should have known them. They didn't and therefore needed to be taught. What's worse is telling someone they should have done something. That often takes, is taken as judgment on what they've already done and can't undo. It's a lot smoother to say, you know, next time you might want to do this a little differently. Or just let it go and have faith that people can learn from their experiences. Now, what I've just said about the judgmental use of should is an example of a tirade. When someone goes on and on about something that they dislike, that's called a tirade in English. Now, getting back on track, there's a difference between the word should and the word must. The word must is not used to give advice or to judge someone's actions. Must should be a clear statement of fact. An obvious one is, you must arrive at the station before the train leaves. That's not an opinion, it's a fact. A matter of cause and effect, arriving at the station after the train leaves, will result in your missing the train. Now this short chart shows some actions related to train travel and let's see which one goes with the word should and which one with the word must. Okay, so we should or must buy a ticket to ride. What do you think? The answer is must. It's not uh, just advice. You have to have that ticket. Let's look at the second one. You should or must take a taxi to the train station. Well, that's advice. There's different ways of getting to the train station, so that should be the word should. And the third one, people should or must make a reservation on long-distance train. Well, as a matter of fact, it is a must. The long-distance trains require reservations. Let's do a few more of these. I should or must travel in a sleeping car. Well, you don't ever have to travel in a sleeping car, so, so that would be the word should. We should or must eat in the dining room. What do you think? No, that's a should. Okay. You should or must tip the car attendant. Well, the fact that you're talking about a tip tells you that's a should and not a must. You should or must have legal ID to board the train. Well, that's a must. That's a requirement. We have some more. You should or must travel with only one bag. Well, if that were true, if that were part of their policy, that would be a must. But right now, it's a should. You can travel with more than one bag on Amtrak. We should or must get, the get to know the name of our car attendant. That's very good advice, but it's not a must. You don't have to know the name, so should goes there. And people should follow instructions from uniformed train employees, or people must follow instructions. Well, you'll find out soon enough if you don't, because that's a must. They can actually make you leave the train. So, for example, uh, let's look at some more. Passengers should or must not smoke on the train. Well, these days, that is a must. And I have heard of people being thrown off the train for smoking on the train, so that's, that's a must. You should or must travel with the map of your route. It's a great thing to do that, but that's a should, not a must. Okay, I'm going to pause a little bit longer here. Passengers should or must board the train before it leaves the station. I think you can figure that one out, but just in case, that's a must. Okay, one more word about should and must. Using the words ought to is the same as saying should. And for the word must, using the words have to 
is another way of saying must. Practice the same prompts we just did, but this time use the words ought to and have to. You'll find these sentence stems on my website. Visit letscreate.org and go to the episode 16 page. Do this as your homework if you want to get really good at this. I suggest putting this in your notebook. Also, come up with your own list of things that you should and must do. We'll take a look after a break here. This is it for segment two. We'll be back with segment three right after this. <music> 